Thank you very much. Guru Gauranga Prabhu want to leave today. Because he has another service somewhere else. Thank you very much for coming, Prabhu, here. So, although you have a different service somewhere else. <laughs> so, it's an inspiration for us. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll start the session today. Jai Jagannath, Jai Balde, Jai Shubhatha Maiti, Shudarshan Bhagavan, Panchatatva Ki Jai, Grigovadhan Ki Jai, Vaitanyan Kai. Om Ajnana Timiran Dhasya, Jnanan Jhana Shala Kaya. Chakshurundilitam yena tasmai shri gurave namaham. Nama om vishnu padaya krishna preshthaya bhutale. Shrimate bhakti vedanta swamin yiti namine. Namaste saraswate deve gauravani pracharine. Nirvisesha shunyabadi paschatya deshatarine. Jaya shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda. Sri Advaita Gadadana Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrindha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shri Prabhupada Ki His Holiness Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj Ki So today we are going to see the chapter number 12 is devotional service Okay so we'll try to summarize within one hour, whatever maximum possible. So if you see, the chapter starts with uh, a question okay, by Arjuna. Uh, and uh, the question is very, very important question. Why? Because we all have the doubt. We all are worried because we don't get answer for such doubts anywhere. Even if we get doubts from somewhere else, but we don't believe it because the source from which we are getting the answer may not be an authentic source. So today Krishna is going to give us the answer. That means there is no other source which is better than Krishna to know about some facts. right? So when it comes to <coughs> difference between the other sources and Krishna, so we all have some limitations to our senses. right? Certain things we can see, certain things we cannot see. Maybe beyond the wall, I can't see what is there. Or maybe even if I see, I might uh, misunderstand it. Or maybe um, I interpret it in my own way. It may be correct or it may not be correct. So with the limited senses that we have, if we interpret something or if we assume something, that is not true always. right? So, So that's why... If you try to get a knowledge from a human being who has a limited senses, it's always possible that it is not true. So, the difference between a human being and Krishna is that the Krishna is not having limited senses. There is no uh, limitations for his uh, knowledge. There is no limitation for his uh, senses. So, that's why we should trust what Krishna is telling. Okay? And uh, the chapter 11 completed last week. What is the name of the chapter 11? What is the name of the chapter 11? Vishwarupa. All attended? Okay. So, I, I will ask you a question. What is the meaning of Vishwarupa? Okay. Okay. What else? Uh, you can tell anything that you think of about Vishwarupa. Whoever attended last week, you can tell Vishwarupa. We can see the entire universe in him. Okay. Then, what else? And was Arjuna happy after seeing him? No. It is a divine form. <laughs> Arjuna was not happy after seeing Vishwarupa. Right? So basically, we all have a different concepts for understanding God. Okay. Unfortunately, we have so many gurus in the world. Every street has a guru who can tell us about who is God. That is unfortunate. We don't listen to what Krishna is telling. We listen to all gurus who are available in every street. 
the problem is every guru has his own interpretation of explaining about god in this process we are misguided we don't know what is right we don't know what is wrong and what is actually the devotion also we don't know and we all assume something is good and we perform that and we think that that is fine and we continue so some people think that the god is impersonal some people think that god is void there is nothing and some people think that i am god and some people think that god has some form and god resides in his abode what is correct and what kind of worship is right what kind of worship is wrong what is the ultimate goal of any worship why should we really worship what are we going to get out of we worship a god okay these are all the so many questions that we have before we actually know about the worship we also should know about whom to worship now uh, till 11th chapter 11th chapter when we see krishna has shown his universal form when krishna has shown, shown his universal form we might think this universal form is god right that means even before he explains about the universal form he said i am there everywhere i am all pervading i am there as a paramatma everywhere so that means krishna's energy is expanding everywhere in this material world we have seen that in the 10th chapter 8th shloka also right so aham sarvasva prabhu i am the lord of all the material and spiritual worlds he mentioned that so then we get a doubt if krishna is there everywhere krishna what do you think if somebody something is there everywhere do we feel that it has a impersonal right obviously we think that if, if something is there expanded everywhere we consider it as an impersonal impersonal so people have an assumption that the krishna means or the god means it's an impersonal god so this way everybody has their own concept of explaining what is god now we also have seen in one of the verse that in ninth chapter he said that you know worship of krishna and worship of other things it may be impersonal or it may be demigods or it may be devi devatas is not say because with less knowledge that we have and with the knowledge that we gain from our elders we think that worshiping anything is say everything leads to same path everything leads to same destination this is what we were thinking but krishna clearly condemned it and he said worshiping demigods worshiping pitru devatas worshiping bhuta pratas and worshiping me is not same okay there are so many people worship different things so when worshiping of all other forms or all other expansions of krishna it may be an expansion of krishna and the worshiping of krishna leads us to a different destination this is something that we will understand from bhagavad gita it's not same destination that we get so before you start your journey you should know where you are going where is your destination if you go to bus stand and catch a bus something is coming what will happen so before you board you should read the board <laughs> right before you board you should read the board if you want to go to delhi catch delhi flight if you want to go to uh, elsewhere you catch that bus but you catch something else and think that somewhere it will take let it go you see thing what will happen we won't reach and the time that we spend in reaching there is waste energy is waste time is waste life is waste because the journey that we are actually we have actually started is not for one hour two hours many people in the past so many people in the past have started their journey many lifetimes ago but they still could not reach the destination so if you don't know which bus you have to catch our journey is you know waste so that's the reason first of all 
when we when we hear about uh, you know catching a bus right boss in fourth chapter krishna said uh, he said the knowledge that i am giving you is given in the disciplic succession uh, that means krishna is telling if you really want to know the truth if you really want to know the actual truth then you should follow the disciplic succession a parampara because krishna himself said the knowledge about me is given to the world through the disciplic succession so if you don't associate yourself with the right succession then we don't lead to the right destination the right disciplic succession is very important there are four authentic vaishnava disciplic successions okay so one is brahma brahma get the knowledge directly from krishna so any disciple under brahma gives us the knowledge is authentic right so that is uh, brahma sampradaya brahma sampradaya is a uh, is a authentic parampara okay authentic disciplic succession and other than brahma who else have got the direct knowledge from krishna is uh, lakshmi devi lakshmi devi is a eternal consort of krishna right so she can get a knowledge directly from krishna so if anybody is getting a knowledge through the disciplic succession where lakshmi devi is there then that is also an authentic that is called sri sampradaya hope uh, ramanuja acharya is there right uh, ramanuja acharya so the disciplic succession through ramanuja acharya if you really want to get the knowledge that is also an authentic succession so they also will help us in taking us back to right destination okay so then the third disciplic succession which is authentic is rudra sampradaya rudra sampradaya is uh, from shiva okay shiva also get the knowledge directly from krishna so anybody in the disciplic succession of shiva also can take us back to krishna okay then the fourth a uh, disciplic succession which is an authentic is kumara sampradaya kumara sampradaya four kumaras you know right chatush kumara so these kumara all they look like young boys okay so these kumaras also have got the knowledge directly from god because they they were having lot of knowledge they don't believe in krishna they don't believe in uh, krishna's personal form they were attracted to the impersonal brahma so one day they thought that you know i want to go and meet bhagwan then i know that the ganga is coming from the feet of bhagwan right so then if i go against ganga's flow then i will reach krishna's feet right and they dipped into the water and they uh, swimmed uh, you know against uh, the flow of the ganga and they reached to the god <laughs> so that's how they reached and then they spoke with god and then god has given them the knowledge so kumara sampradaya is also an authentic sampradaya so unfortunately not all other sampradayas have a good publicity and they don't uh, uh, you know preach well so that is the reason not many of us don't know about what is kumara sampradaya who will be there uh, you know who is coming from that succession and whom we can reach and all but lakshmi sampradaya somewhat okay that's called sri sampradaya so many devotees are there sri sampradaya okay every sampradaya has their own way of reaching god okay every sampradaya has their own way of reaching god but the purpose of the devotion is for us to go back to god right so if that is something that can be helped us by any sampradaya we are very happy to associate with them and we can go back to godhead so this is the purpose now fortunately arjuna directly learning the knowledge from krishna okay so because arjuna is a uh, you know uh, eternal associate of krishna so he is directly getting and also he said the qualification of uh, arjuna in the past arjuna was a friend arjuna was a dear arjuna was a lovable and uh, arjuna is not having enviousness so many qualifications that arjuna has so arjuna has been given this knowledge okay so now after uh, arjuna see the universal form in the 11th chapter now arjuna got it down 
I'm not attracted to this universal form. Because initially he has shown the universal form. Right? That means he is all pervading. Everywhere he is there. All and anywhere he see, look at standing at one place, he could see everywhere and he found Krishna everywhere. Initially it was happy, it was nice, it is pleasure. Then slowly, slowly the universal form turned into Kala Rupa. Right? Universal form turned into Kala Rupa. That means the universal form, something that Krishna is showing is not, you know, something that is not changing. It is changing. The universal form is changing time to time. So initially when Arjuna saw, he was happy and he was surprised. So just like how a non-devotee see the universal form, he will be surprised. Oh, this is the God. They will conclude this is the God. Because no one else can expand like this. If Krishna can expand like this, so this is the God. Because everything is in this. Past is there, present is there, future is there in this. So there is nothing else beyond this. So universal form is the God. That's what somebody thinks. But when the universal form expanded further into Kala Rupa, Kala Rupa means it's a time, it's a depth. Kala means depth. So you might be thinking that, you know, we are permanent and we have been there forever. <laughs> and the assets that we are building will be there forever. So that way we take care of them. So no matter what material you use to construct a building, no matter, okay, from where you import, but in the time, everything will be destroyed, right? Everything will be destroyed. Nothing will be remaining. Everything will be destroyed. In the past, so many people died. Present, so many people are dying. In future, so many people will die. And we also will be one among them. Any doubt? <laughs> no doubt. So that is the uh, fearful form that Krishna has shown. I am Kala. That means Krishna is going to destroy everybody. That's why he has shown so many people dying into his mouth. Right? Some people are dying and they are going and stucking in their teeth and bleeding. Right? And uh, uh, Krishna is enjoying the blood. <laughs> Krishna is enjoying the blood and licking the lips. Uh, so enjoying the blood and licking the lips and uh, taking everybody into him. So that means he is a pralaya. Right? He is a pralaya. So when Arjuna has seen this and he did not like this, it's not giving him a pleasure. Then he said, withdraw this form. I can't see this anymore. Please, please withdraw this form. If we think that you know, whatever the form that we are seeing is a God, why will we say that we withdraw? A devotee does not like to see this kind of form. Arjuna, like devotee, cannot see this form. He says, withdraw this form because it's not giving me pleasure. I want to see Shama Sundara form. Right? Shama Sundara form. So the Shama Sundara form is so beautiful that you keep seeing the Shama Sundara and you will feel like seeing again and again. And it will give you happiness. But whereas in the material world, any beauty that you see, it may be a beautiful flower, it may be a beautiful girl, or it may be a beautiful person. But after seeing for some time, you will feel bored. And it will give you agitation. In fact, it will give you agitation. If you see a beautiful girl, what will happen? It will give you agitation. The mind, right? <laughs> Somehow, I have to go and propose her. <laughs> Somehow, I have to talk to her. What is the way? How can I talk? These kind of agitations will means any beauty that you are seeing, although it is giving you pleasure, it is also giving you agitation. But whereas Krishna's form is not like that. Right? You don't get agitation. You'll feel happy. You'll feel enjoyed. As long as you see Krishna's form, you will you will you will be you know enjoying that form and and the tears will come out of your eyes when you see. So that is out of the love that you have. Right? That love we don't realize. Unless otherwise you realize you don't get the tears. Right? Because the relationship between Krishna and us is spiritual. It's not physical. It's not material. Okay? It's a spiritual. Only our spirit can understand that relationship. So, uh, when you see your son after 20 years, 
how will you feel how will you feel you will you will remember everything right and you will, you will remember everything and the whole movie will come up in front of our eyes uh, then you will uh, then you will tear you will come out of tears right and you will hug them and you will express your love and that love is physical love bodily relationship that you have with your son there is no soul relationship that you have so when you realize the soul relationship when you see that eternal you know source of your uh, living entity then obviously your living entity will also cry the way you are crying for your son your pillow the soul also cries that's why we get tears okay and when you touch the tears when you look at the uh, form of the lord and the tears will be cold okay the cold tears represents that the love that you have say so we we can be angry sometimes when we are angry we are we get a tears when we are uh, really worried we get a tears and we are crying we get a tears but uh, all the time the tears will not have a same temperature but if the tears are coming out of the happiness and the tears are coming out of the love then that tears will be cold okay so that is the actually uh, the real love so the problem is now when krishna said i am pervading everywhere and krishna said see my universal form and arjuna is not liking anything that he is seeing and arjuna is like only liking the two handed form of krishna two handed form of krishna that's why arjuna asked show me two handed form then krishna withdrawn his universal form and came to the four handed form first before he come to the two handed form he came to the four handed form. even then arjuna said sorry i don't want this form also <laughs> so then again krishna has withdrawn his four hands and with the two handed form in a shama sundara form right shama sundara form beautiful form and that form is so beautiful that even the cupid will be you know seeing that form he will be very uh, you know happy <laughs> so such a form krishna arjuna has seen now arjuna has got it down okay whether the form that i'm liking is right or not <laughs> so you have shown the impersonal form everywhere you have shown should i worship that or should i worship you like how you are seen to me so what is the right form because we also have different opinions right we don't know what is right we don't know what is wrong so that's why arjuna has expressed his doubt in the first words so what did he say evam satata yuktaye bhaktyastyam paryupashate ye chapyaksharam avyaktam tesham ke yugha vidyogha vittama arjuna yang koi which are considered to be more perfect those who are always properly engaged in your devotional service or those who worship the impersonal brahman the unmanifested okay this is the doubt that we all have unfortunately the problem is we have many bhagavad gita available everyone's hand there is a bhagavad gita in the market there are hundreds hundred other bhagavad gita available but the problem is they don't interpret right things in right way we think yellow book is right we think green book is right we think red book is right because for me for my eyes yellow looks better so i'll buy yellow book so the problem is we should not follow all these books that's why i keep insisting that you know don't buy anything that is available in the market because they don't interpret it properly what is krishna saying what is arjuna hearing what are they writing everything different arjuna clearly asked here whether i should worship the impersonal brahman or i should worship the form that i am seeing you in the in the form that i am seeing you now which is right a straight forward answer will be given to us by krishna in this chapter and this chapter is very important 12th chapter last chapter of the devotional service last chapter in bhakti yoga right so i mentioned in the past 
ఫస్ట్ సిక్స్ చాప్టర్స్ ఆర్ కర్మయోగ నెక్స్ట్ చిప్ట సిక్స్ చాప్టర్స్ ఆర్ భక్తి యోగ అండ్ నెక్స్ట్ నెక్స్ట్ సిక్స్ చాప్టర్స్ ఆర్ జ్ఞాన యోగ సో దిస్ ఇస్ ద లాస్ట్ చాప్టర్ ఆఫ్ భక్తి యోగ ఇఫ్ వి కంప్లీట్ దిస్ టూ థర్డ్ ఆఫ్ భగవద్గీత వి కమ్ అండ్ టూ థర్డ్ ఆఫ్ భగవద్గీత వి ఆర్ కంప్లీట్ సో కృష్ణ ఇస్ గోయింగ్ టు ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ ప్యూర్ డివోషనల్ సర్ సో ఎ ప్యూర్ డివోటీ హౌ హీ విల్ బి వాట్ యూ మీన్ బై ప్యూర్ డివోషన్ దాట్ ఈస్ వాట్ వి ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు అండర్స్టాండ్ ఇన్ టూ డేస్ చాప్టర్ ఓకే so if we don't understand this whatever the devotion that we are doing it is not going to lead us to the right destination that means we are in a wrong bus we should get down now right when we realize that we are not in the right bus what should we do we should get down and find out a right bus so for that krishna is helping us if you think that okay let it go anywhere then we are the most unfortunate people right so let us understand what is krishna is saying now arjuna is asking there can be an impersonal brahma and there is a personal form that i am seeing which is right the problem is everybody in this material world are suffering agree everybody has problem if any if i ask you anybody why are you suffering what will you say this life is the reason for my suffering right <laughs> i took birth that is the reason for my suffering i took this form that is the reason for my suffering i born as a human being that is the reason for my suffering we can't blame anybody because our situations are given to us in that way right so one school of thought says that the suffering is because of the form that you have that means the liberation means getting to the stage where you don't have a form formlessness is the liberation so that's why they found impersonal brahman is the ultimate god there is no form for the god if you want to get liberated you also should become formless this is one school of thought they teach impersonal brahman as a supreme lord and this is called mayavada this is called maya they don't believe in the form of the god that's why arjuna is asking here is the worship of impersonal brahman is right are wrong okay because many of us if you think if you go and talk to people who are there maybe you are elders or maybe whom you think as a you know respectable person in your life you would talk they will believe in impersonal god because unfortunately this mayavada philosophy has expanded so much that you know it has penetrated in everyone's heart and they said krishna god means is an impersonal impersonal there is no form for the god and some people say it is an unknown energy which is driving us from somewhere something energy cannot be there without a source of energy agree if i am moving this table table is getting moved that means i am delivering the energy that means the source is me if i am not there the energy cannot be there sun rays without sun can there be sun rays can there be light light is an impersonal impersonal it is all pervading light is all pervading but if you think the light itself is a brahman light itself is a sun then is it right no light has a source and that is sun sun planet right sun has a form sun has a form but sun is delivering the energy but we think that the energy is an ultimate and we forget about the sun's form then our knowledge is our knowledge is half knowledge <laughs> right our knowledge is not full so so that's why we need to understand that impersonal brahman worship is not a uh, right worship so if anybody is saying that the impersonal worship is right then we are offending krishna we are offending krishna please understand there are different type of impersonalists one is called mayavadi another one is called brahmavadi impersonalist also two types impersonalist means a people who are worshiping the impersonal brahman are also two types one is mayavadi one is brahmavadi the difference between the mayavadi and brahmavadi is brahmavadi believes that there is a form but i am not attracted to that form 
I am attracted to the impersonal feature of the Krishna. Impersonal Brahman, I am attracted. Just like that. Now, people may not like me, but they like my shirt. Okay. People may not like Krishna, but people like Krishna's flute. It's okay. Anything that belongs to Krishna, you can like, you can worship. <laughs> but as long as you think that that is belongs to Krishna, it is fine. Even impersonal Brahman is also belongs to Krishna. Impersonal Brahman also belongs to Krishna. Impersonal Brahman means what? The affluence that is coming out of Krishna's body. The affluence that is coming out of Krishna's body is impersonal Brahman. If you can love impersonal Brahman with the consciousness that it is, it is, it belongs to Krishna, is fine. You are not offending Krishna. You are loving the impersonal Brahman because it is belongs to Krishna. It is equal to loving Krishna. Okay. But there are certain people who say that I don't believe in the form of Krishna. I only believe impersonal Brahman is the supreme. And even Krishna's form is coming from the impersonal Brahman. Why Krishna is coming from the impersonal Brahman? Nobody knows. They say, I don't get affection, love for impersonal Brahman. If I ask you to meditate on nothing, can you meditate? Possible? It is not possible. You have to meditate on something. And that something should be the Krishna's form. So, so when, when somebody say that the form of the Krishna, it may be Rama, it may be Krishna, it may be Narasimha, it may be Varaha. The source of all these forms is impersonal Brahman. And these forms are helping us to take us back to impersonal. This is the belief of the Mayavadis. Okay. So, if they think in that way and worship the impersonal Brahman, then they are doing a mistake. They are offending the form of Krishna. They are offending the form of Krishna. When you offend the form of Krishna, you don't get right destination. You don't even go to the impersonal Brahman. Even though you love impersonal Brahman, even the whole life you worship impersonal Brahman, you don't reach impersonal Brahman. The kind of liberation that you are expecting, you don't get. Right? Where do we go? We go to Naraka. <laughs> because we are offending the form of Lord. <laughs> we are offending the form of Lord. Obviously, we go to Naraka. So, we all think that we are spiritually progressed by worshipping impersonal Brahman. We are spiritually progressed by worshipping impersonal Brahman. But that is not true because we are other side offending Krishna. Right? So, that is not a right worship. That is why Krishna is telling here in the second verse, Shri Bhagavanu Vacha Maya Vesha Mano Vidyamam Itya Yukta Vupasate Shadhaya Parayopeta Semo Yukta Tamamataha The Supreme Personality of God had said those who fix their minds on my personal form and are always engaged in worshipping me with a great and transcendental faith are considered by me to be the most perfect. Out of all devotees, who is perfect? Krishna is telling those who worship my personal form. Directly he is telling. So you may be saying that you know, even impersonalists are worshipping Krishna's form. True. Even impersonalists, people who believe in the Impersonal Brahman worship Krishna's form because they believe that the form of the Krishna is coming from the impersonal Brahman to help us take us back to impersonal Brahman. So Krishna's form is a mediator for us to take us back to Krishna. Uh, sorry, take us back to impersonal. But Krishna is telling here that if you worship me with faith, not that worship me. So you should worship. Krishna by believing that Krishna's form is the supreme form. Krishna's form. Krishna is the supreme lord. This is what we should believe before we start worship. Got it? So, so it is very important to understand the philosophy of Krishna. Without understanding the philosophy of Krishna, if we worship also, you don't get the right distance. Right benefit of spiritual progress that you are getting. That's why Krishna said in the fourth chapter, Janma karma chametivyam evam ye vetti tattvata. 
Krishna said, understand me with logic, understand me with tattva, then you worship. That's why Krishna is telling, he is coming all the way here, in this material world and executing Lok so many pastimes. Tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam talks about complete Krishna's pastime. So maybe in the next two, three weeks later, we will be starting 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam in Telugu from 8 to 9 p.m. by in Zoom. Anybody understand Telugu can join in Zoom. So 10th canto, all Krishna's pastimes we will discuss from the childhood. Okay. So, so yeah, if anybody understand Telugu, let me know. I will add you in the uh, Bhagavatam group. Yeah, Bhagavatam group. Okay. So, Krishna here is telling that worshipping is not just important. Worshipping with the faith is important. That's why Krishna is saying you should have Shraddha. Shraddha means faith. So, with the faith, what is the faith that we should have? The form that I'm seeing, the two-handed form, Shama Sundara form is the supreme form. And all other forms is, are coming from this form. The source of all other forms is Krishna. If you can believe this, then you worship Krishna. Then that is the right worship Krishna is. And such a devotee is a perfect devotee. So, when you want to start your path in the spiritual path, progress, then you should first understand where to start, how to start, what to start. Right? So, now we understood. Krishna is telling this. Fine. Now we understood. And uh, earlier also, uh, Krishna many times he said, although we have seen Karma Yoga and we are seeing now Bhakti Yoga, this is a pure devotion. There is no, uh, you know, mixed Karma or mixed Jnana anywhere. It's a pure devotion he is telling. Because in the first six chapters, although it is quoted as Karma, but actually it is not Karma, it is Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga means there also he is telling devotion. Right? So, but it is a Karma Misrita Bhakti. Okay? So, it's mixed with action. So, now he is telling no mix. It's only pure. <laughs> but next six chapters he will tell Jnana Misrita Bhakti. So, it's not complete Jnana. Jnana Yoga he is. Okay? It's a Jnana Misrita Bhakti. So, Jnani believes in uh, impersonal Brahma. In fact, a Jnani believes in impersonal Brahma. That's why Krishna says, Jnani will not get liberation. Jnani will get liberation after taking many births. Right? After taking many births also, how he will get? He will realize after many births that you know, there is a form beyond what I am believing. That is possible only when a pure devotee gets connected with him, associated with him. Right? And then he will give him knowledge that there is a personal form. Krishna is there and believe him <laughs> and worship him. And Krishna himself said in Bhagavad Gita, Believe him and then worship him. That's what Krishna is telling you. Then what will happen to the person who worship impersonal Brahman? Klesho adhikitaraste sham avyakta sakta chetasam. Avyakta hi gati dhukka dehama For those whose minds are attached to the unmanifested impersonal feature of Supreme, advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. Embodied means it's one who is in this material body. Okay. So Krishna is telling if you really want to take the path of worshipping me through impersonal Brahman, it is difficult. It is very difficult. Klesho adhikata. Klesha means difficulties. Adhikata means most difficult. So he is telling it is very difficult. It's not easy. But whereas Bhakti? Susukam kartum avya. In the ninth chapter we have seen. Raja vichha, raja guhyam. Susukam kartum avyayam, he said. Okay, that means the performing devotional service is giving you happiness, pleasure. Who will not like dancing to Kirtana? Who will not like having prasada? And this is devotional service. Who is not liking the, um, you know, Kirtana? Who is not liking Shravana? We all are hearing, right? 
So Shravanam is also one of the devotional service. We might be thinking, I am not devotee. I am not doing devotional service. Don't think that way. Because there are many ways of performing devotion. So it's not that you know you worship Krishna in the deity form is only a devotional service. There are many ways that you can worship Krishna. Okay. So one thing for sure in this verse, Krishna said, if you really want to choose a path of impersonal Brahman, it is very difficult and the path is very difficult and also you will get more uh, you know, measures. That's what Krishna is saying. That is, it's not easy. Yeah. Impersonal Brahman is the effulgence of Krishna. So people think that there is an effulgence of Krishna. Uh, there is an effulgence. They don't believe that it is an effulgence of Krishna. They believe that there is a light Okay, so the source of everything, even this material world, or maybe human beings, or maybe animals, air, trees, this material nature, everything is coming from the impersonal. Okay, and when annihilation happens, everything goes and merges into impersonal Brahman. This is what uh, some people think. But Krishna is telling, even for that impersonal Brahman, I am the source. That means there is a torch light. Okay, if I put a torch in the darkness and you are seeing from the front side, you will only see the torch. You can't see me behind the torch. Right? So, behind the torch, there is a Krishna. <laughs> behind the impersonal Brahman, impersonal light, there is a Krishna. But our knowledge is limited up to only impersonal Brahman. We are not able to see beyond the light. Okay, if you have a full knowledge, for that you need to have a Divya Chakshu. Okay. The transcendental eyes you should have, uh, like how Arjuna was given by Krishna. He is not having a material eyes. With the material eyes, you cannot see America from here. Right? You cannot forget about America. You cannot see what is happening at your house from here. <laughs> right? But if you have spiritual eyes, you can see everywhere by sitting at here. That's what Arjuna is seeing. Whole universal form he has seen. What does it mean? He is seeing America from here. Right? He is seeing London from here. He is seeing future from here. He has he is seeing past from here. So <clears throat> everything is you know the, the source of everything is Krishna. Okay, that's why Krishna is telling uh, the path you worship through impersonal Brahman is very difficult, troublesome. So let us understand the ways of devotion. Okay, now it is very important. Ways of devotion is important, and the topmost devotion is what and the uh, what are the different levels of devotion we, we, we will understand in this chapter. Okay. So, there are nine ways of devotional service. Can anybody say what are the nine ways of devotional service? Anybody knows? Yeah. Okay. 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 Dasyam. Yeah. Okay, very nice. So, there is a verse in Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, in 7th canto, 5th chapter by uh, Prahlad Maharaj. Shri Prahlad Avvacham Shavanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Pada Sevanam Arjanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atmani Vedanam Itipum Sarpita Vishnu Bhakti Sthena Valakshanam Kriyate Bhagavati Adha Tanmanji Samvuttamam so, in this verse, Prahlada is telling there are nine ways of performing devotional service. The first one is Shravanam, hearing, Kirtanam, chanting, chanting. I am doing Kirtan, you are doing Shravanam. You are doing Shravanam. So, I am also performing devotional service, you are also performing devotional service. There is no difference. Okay. Kirtanam means spelling, chanting. Shravanam means hearing. Different senses are used for different purposes. But both are devotional service. Then Smaranam. You don't chant, you don't hear. But you remember. Okay, That is also a devotional service. So, you sit and meditate on God is also devotional service. That's what Krishna is saying. Okay? So, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam. Smaranam itself is not a devotional service. But Vishnu Smaranam is a devotional service. Okay. 
you think about your lover is not devotion service <laughs> okay you think about something that you like is not a devotion service you think about krishna is a devotion service okay then pada sevanam pada sevanam means massaging the feet of krishna is it possible for any one of you <laughs> so only lakshmi devi can do that but the best pada sevanam that we can do is with our legs we walk to the temples this is the pada sevanam that we should do every sunday 4 pm we come by walk here that is the pada sevanam that we can do. <laughs> so so uh, every yearly once at least go to vrindavan that is pada sevanam and sarkamlet tulsi is pada sevanam sarkamlet temples is pada sevanam okay something that we do with our legs is pada sevanam for the pleasure of krishna not for the pleasure of us okay so every day morning also people are walking on the roads that is not pada sevanam okay if they are walking to go to agra jagannath temple then it is pada sevanam if they are walking till agra and coming back home is not pada sevanam because every day morning jogging people are doing right on 27th may <laughs> i can see hundreds of people that is not pada sevanam if you go and take darshan of jagannath mandir then that is pada sevanam <laughs> okay so the next one is archanam archanam is the deity worship that we are doing right archanam is also a devotional service then vandanam vandanam means offering prayers namaskaram the moment when we come into this room what are we doing we are paying obeisances to krishna right we are doing all devotion services we are doing we are doing shravanam we are doing kirtanam we are doing archanam we are doing vandanam we are doing everything what is that we are not doing here that's why it is very important this two hours coming to this center every sunday okay so then dasyam serving serving krishna is important okay service to the devotees service to the krishna is important i'll tell you the example for each one it's not that you know one can perform all nine types of devotional service it's not possible because somebody may not like archana somebody may not like dasyam somebody may not like something okay i'm i may be liking sitting here and telling but i may not be like something else okay but uh, everybody uh, is not necessary to do all types of devotional service any one you can choose which is more suitable for you okay then you perform that then that is the devotional service and you can get perfection out of it it's not that you know a person who is doing nine types of devotional service is great and i am not great because i am only doing several it's not like that okay either one or all or more than one you can do okay then also it is equal to performing devotional service and you get the same perfection like all others here then after archanam vandanam dasyam and then sakyam having a friend, friendly relationship with krishna making krishna as your friend making krishna as your family member loving him is also one of the devotional service how is it possible how is it possible we we consider that krishna is also one of our family member one of our friend then just like how we tell everything to our friends right we want somebody to share our feelings right generally whom we share friends close friends dearest friends so if you can make krishna your dearest friend you tell everything to krishna then that is also a devotion okay you have happiness share with krishna you have difficulty share with krishna that is also devotion service okay then atma nivedanam atma nivedanam means surrender yourself offer yourself not just offering something belongs to us offering ourselves to krishna is also devotional service i'll tell you some of the examples of different types of devotional service the first one is shravanam the shravanam the example for the shravanam that means a person who got the perfection by shravanam is parikshin maharaj shrimad bhagavatam started by parikshin maharaj uh, situation uh, so that time what he did 
he was cursed by a rishi by a brahmana son that you know you will die in seven days if we know that we are going to die in seven days what will we do uh, if we know that we are going to die in seven days what is the first thing that we do are you sure <laughs> but what else we do first thing i will do is i'll write the virunama <laughs> I'll write a will, uh, and I'll disclose all my properties to my wife, my kids. <laughs> these are the fixed deposits. These are the shares. These are the mutual funds. These are the assets. These are the documents. This is my bank password. <laughs> This is the insurance. <laughs> so after I die, take all these things and enjoy. Okay. <laughs> We don't want this to be going elsewhere other than to my son's hands or my wife's hand. <laughs> Okay, first we will do. We will take care of all these things. But Parikshit Maharaj did not do this. <laughs> Parikshit Maharaj was a king, ruling the entire world. Okay, ruling the entire world. He is having all opulences. He is having materially, you know, lot of assets. He is beaut. He is handsome. He has beautiful wives. He has sons. He has everything that is. that you think of in this material world he has everything you know what he did next moment when he learned about his death he renounced his death. he left his kingdom he left beautiful wife he left his sons and he went and sat somewhere in the uh, uh, yamuna tat okay so there Sukadev Goswami came. Sukadev Goswami is the son of Vyasa Deva. He is also renounced. He is known to be pure devotee. Then, Parikshit Maharaj asked Sukadev Goswami to tell about what I should do now. Then he he said, "Listen to Shrimad Bhagavatam." Shrimad Bhagavatam started there. Okay, Shrimad Bhagavatam was written by Vyasa Dev. and uh, that bhagavatam spoken by parikshit uh, sorry sukadev goswami with parikshit bhagavatam seven days uninterrupted he did not even take break for uh, water food seven days and seven nights continuously he was hearing shrimad bhagavatam okay this is what he has done this is the devotional service he has done <laughs> okay we might be thinking that we are materially engaged so much like parikshit maharaj because we have so many assets we have to take care of them we have so many responsibilities we have to take care of them we have wife kids family everything we have to take care of them if you can get an opportunity to hear about krishna that is the best thing that you can do at towards the end of your life okay so parikshit maharaj uh, being materially engaged so much so far but seven days completely engaged in devotion service in the shravanam of shrimad bhagavatam shrimad bhagavatam talks about only krishna and krishna's devotees okay hearing bhagavatam will give you liberation did parikshit maharaj do all other nine devotion services no he has done only shravanam then he got liberation okay so whatever we are doing that's why krishna says always listen Listen, listen about me. Then you will understand. Even when Krishna started telling about Bhagavad Gita, he told Arjuna, "Listen, carefully listen." That is the uh, importance of Shravana. Then Kirtanam. The example for Kirtanam is Shukadev Goswami. While Parikshit Maharaj was hearing, Shukadev Goswami was telling, so he was doing Kirtan. So if you can chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Which is equal to Shravana and Kirtan. Okay, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. When you say this, you are also doing Kirtan. You are also hearing. So you get a benefit of Shravana and Kirtan by chanting Hare Krishna. Okay, so that is very very important. So you are doing double double benefit. You are getting a double benefit by doing. Hare Krishna Mahamantra, chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. But the condition is, 
you should be able to listen to what you are saying. Don't chant within you. Okay, somebody chants. Somebody say, "My inside chant kar raha." Okay, I'm chanting inside. Okay, that's not correct. Chant loudly so that you can hear. It becomes shravanam and kirtan. Then the third one is smarana. Smarana means meditating upon Lord. The example is. The example for Smarana is Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj was always remembering Krishna. He is always remembering Krishna. He is always meditating on Krishna. Even when his father Hiranyakashipu told not to meditate on, uh, you know, Krishna, you meditate on me. He said, "I am the God." Okay, we all think that materially, you know, elevated people, materially achieved people, think that I don't need God, and everybody should respect me. Because I have so much wealth, I have so much money, I have so many assets, I have so much fame, name, everything. So people should worship me. People should praise me. So in the same way, Hiranya Kashyapu also said, "Nobody can defeat me in this world. So I am the God. So chant my name, think about me, worship me." But Pralam Maharaj did not accept that. Pralam Maharaj. Only chanted the name of Lord, and he is only remembering only Krishna. So what happened? He got liberation. So he was loved by Krishna. So if you remember, uh, in occasions where God speaks, He takes an example of Prahlad Maras. He takes an example of Prahlad Maras because a pure devotee means Prahlad Maras. A pure devotee means Prahlad Maras. That means Prahlad Maharaj's greatness. You understand, even God is quoting Prahlad Maharaj as an example for a devotee. Okay, such a Prahlad Maharaj is telling us uh, Navamita Bhakti, nine types of devotional service. Definitely, it is authentic, and we should believe in it. Right. So then, Pada Sevanam. I already told. Pada Sevanam means worshiping God by massaging the feet. So. Krishna will be happy if you go to Vrindavan. Krishna will be happy if you are circumambulating uh, the temple. Actually, we we have to circumambulate the Tulasi. That is also devotion service. Okay, I think we should start Tulasi worship in our center. Uh, maybe a couple of weeks later, we will bring one Tulasi, and uh, every day after, uh, along with our deity worship, we will also worship Tulasi, so that we will complete the nine ways of devotion service. Okay. So we should ensure that we are worshiping Krishna in the prescribed way, not the way we like, right? So, so Tulsi worship is also a Pada Sevana, okay? Pada Sevana. Next, Archanam. For Archanam, Pradha Maharaj is the best example. Archanam, Pradha Maharaj. Pradha Maharaj story comes in Bha Bhagavatam, okay? In fourth canto, Pradha Maharaj is the direct incarnation of Krishna. Okay, so Pradha Maharaj came from Vena Raj, Vena King, King Vena. King Vena was a materially fallen guy. Okay, he is not ruling the kingdom well. He is killing the Brahmanas. He is killing everybody, and he claimed himself as a god. And uh, and uh, but the problem is Brahmanas does not like. Brahmanas killed Vena Raj, Vena King. So when Vena King was killed. There was no person who takes care of the kingdom. Then they churned the body of Vena Raj. Then Pradha Maharaj came. When they churned the body of Vena, then Pradha Maharaj came. Pradha Pradha Maharaj is a incarnation of Krishna. Okay. Then he established the way of worshiping Krishna. Okay. So then, in those ages, the archana, archana, deity worship is the way of worshiping Krishna. Okay. Because uh, if you consider in Treta Yuga, uh, before Treta Yuga, Satya Yuga, okay, the prescribed duty is worshiping Krishna by the deity worship. Okay. Uh, in in one in in uh, yeah, sorry in in uh, even in uh, the Dwapara Yuga it is the prescribed way of worshiping Krishna. Okay. So it is not that you know worshiping Krishna. Sorry, deity worship 
is the only way that we have to follow even in kali yuga because every yuga has a different different ways of worship okay it's what it's there okay so uh, prescribed way is uh, uh, defined in the shastras okay in satya yuga the meditation and uh, in treta yuga yajnas in dwapara yuga deity worship in kali yuga sankirtan okay sankirtana yajna so this is the right way of uh, worshiping krishna so uh, if you uh, if you don't follow the yuga dharma what is the dharma mentioned for that yuga we should follow if you don't follow the yuga dharma you, you will not get the right benefit in kali yuga sankirtana yajna is the only way of worshiping krishna if you cannot do this i think uh, you will not get the perfection because uh, because it is uh, not possible for us to do the way uh, dwapara yuga people did in the deity worship because a lot of aparadas we do while performing the uh, uh, you know deity worship a lot of aparadas we don't know it is all called seva aparada so we should not do seva aparada while doing aparadas if you think that i am worshiping krishna and getting the perfection it's not possible okay so without offenses we should do the worship but that is not possible in kali yuga because whatever the things that we are using for worshiping krishna are not pure do we have ganga jal now no but we still consider some water as a ganga jal and we purify our uh, you know paraphernalia with the water that we think it as a ganga jal because we invite ganga into the kalasha right so in the same way everything is made up of material uh, things so when the material things itself is not a pure then what kind of worship that we can do to the krishna okay so it is all not offenseless worship so we have to do offenseless worship okay so that's why uh, we have to chant the name, holy name of krishna hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare this is the right way of worship chanting is the right way of worship that's why we all tell you chant at least one round in a day one round of how many of you are chanting one round at least it is very very important to chant at least one round every day okay that is the only way prescribed in this kali yuga okay so then dasyam the example for dasyam is hanuman hanuman worship as a seva sevak right as a servant so as a servant of rama he went to lanka and uh, he lit the fire for that uh, lanka so that is the kind of seva we should do it's not that you know we get angry like how anuman got so we should get angry only if somebody offend krishna right uh, like he got angry on ravana because ravana offended krishna uh, rama otherwise he will not get uh, angry so so uh, so so it is very important our anger also we should use in a devotional service okay next sakyam the best example is arjuna friend friendly relationship okay then is, next is atma nivedanam offering ourselves who did it bali maharaj so when bali maharaj was performing the sacrifice yagna vamana dev came vamana asked give me three feet land okay bali maharaj has given three feet land but he occupied the entire universe in that three and the, in two feet he occupied and there is no place for uh, bali maharaj to keep the third feet then he offered himself okay this also comes in shrimad bhagavatam you can see okay so these are the four way, nine ways of worship and i'll quickly conclude on this then then krishna is telling about the levels of devotion we might be thinking that where am i whether the kind of devotional service that i am performing is a right devotional service or not we don't know so krishna is telling us different levels of devotional service because some people think that the devotion means uh, you know work is worship some people think right some people think work is worship and some people think manava seva madhava seva 
हाउ मेनी पीपल थे मेनी पीपल थे ठीक है सोशल सर्विस इफ यू डू द सोशल सर्विस दैट इज अ डिवोशन राइट सम पीपल थिंक डोनेशन इज अ डिवोशन सम पीपल थिंक डिफरेंट लेवल्स ऑफ डिवोशन बट कृष्णा इज गोइंग टू टेल व्हाट इज द राइट डिवोशन व्हाट इज द टॉप लेवल ऑफ डिवोशन ओके सो लेट अस सी इन द एथ वर्स just fix your mind upon me that supreme personality of god is and engage all your intelligence in me thus you will live in me always without a doubt this is what krishna is telling this is the top most level of devotion what is that we need to use to become a top most devotee here krishna said use two things in me one is one is intelligence and the second one is mind if you can use your mind and your intelligence in worship of krishna in the service of krishna that is the top most devotion right we have senses right yeah, so there are uh, um, subtle senses and there are gross senses gross senses are something that we can see eyes ears nose mouth and skin all these are gross senses you can see i can see my skin i can see my nose i can see my mouth i can see my ears eyes with our body krishna is not telling that you have used all your senses material senses and worship me is a top what is he saying use your intelligence and your mind in the service of me that is the top most devotion you understand that means there are subtle senses which are there in us which are mind and intelligence so in telugu it is buddhi and manas okay if you can use this mind and intelligence in the service of krishna then you are a top most devotee okay so now we get a doubt how to use intelligence in devotion how to use mind in devotion we get a doubt right intelligence in devotion you have so many of books that you have okay you read those books understand them and understand what is krishna and worship krishna this is called using intelligence in krishna maybe if you are so talented that you can use your intelligence organize a organize a festival maybe janmashtami or maybe radha yatra okay organize a festival organizing a festival re- requires a lot of intelligence you need to coordinate with so many people so many stakeholders uh, so many devotees circulate uh, the message and invite people and worship god then uh, it is possible for us uh, to perform that festival it is not that easy for uh, for conducting a marriage itself is very difficult right so if you are inviting lakhs of people thousands of people for janmashtami how difficult it will be i think next year must be we all will try to celebrate <laughs> okay in a big way okay so so we all have to invite so many people and we have to organize so this is called engaging our intelligence in krishna okay then uh then the engaging mind if you can think about krishna and krishna past times always while you are chanting i i mentioned chanting is equal to um shravanam and kirtana this also becomes equal to smaranam when you can meditate on krishna and chant okay so while chanting you meditate on krishna then it becomes shravanam kirtanam smaranam all three right so so this is the way that we need to worship krishna with mind and with intelligence then you become a top most devotee okay then krishna says if you cannot do this so we we all want to become perfect right in our career also we want to become perfect so but first we will have we want to appear for ias exams okay okay i will try attempting to become an ias but in the process i might become ips or ifs or something i don't know <laughs> because if i don't get a top rank what will happen i might become ias ips or if you are running if you are running for in the race and you want to get a gold medal and for that you should become a you should you should be the first one to reach the goal right unfortunately you did not reach first 
and you reach the second what will happen you will get silver medal instead of gold medal <laughs> right if you reach third what will happen bronze medal if you reach fourth what will happen some consolation prize you will get if you reach fifth what will happen you will say participation certificate you will get <laughs> so participation certificate you will get so but the aim is to get the gold medal right that means you become first so if you really want to become gold medalist become this engage your subtle senses in krishna service intelligence and mind should be engaged in krishna service then you are gold medalist but it's not possible for everyone to win the race okay if there is a race only one person can win the race then krishna says the option two my dear arjuna oh winner of wealth if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation then follow the regulative principles of bhakti yoga in the way in that way in this way develop the desire to attain me krishna is telling if not this year's race you should be first in the next year race <laughs> okay you lost the game in this year so you have to win next competition for that you be prepared so now krishna is telling engage your material senses so what is he saying so he is telling follow the regulative principles the rules and regulations that are mentioned in bhakti yoga you should follow so rise in the morning chant okay then go to temple and then take prasadam all these things are uh, you know some of the rules that are given to us by acharyas and also following the regulative principles following the regulative principles means leave, giving up all the bad habits like uh, you know intoxication like giving up illegal relationships and uh, um you know giving up gambling so anything that we are doing sinful activities we should give up all sinful activities and follow the regulative principles that means you should live like a sadhu you should live like a good person then you worship so that's why krishna is telling engage your material senses in krishna so that you will be able to engage your subtle senses in krishna after some time <laughs> right if you don't serve krishna how will you get love for krishna okay husband and wife they'll have love between each other do you think when a husband comes to house and wife says i love you is that love <laughs> and the wife says 10 times i love you but she she will not give even water to him <laughs> but she will say i love you i love you i love you i love you is it love without service there is no love you have to serve your husband <laughs> then you will get love for your husband right so that is the real love so that's why krishna is telling you serve me follow the regulative principles of bhakti yoga that is equal to serving me then you get love for me then you become a top most devotee so this is the second class devotee second level devotee people who are serving god people whom you think as a devotee is not a topmost devotee unless otherwise he use his mind and intelligence in the devotion okay next third class devotee <laughs> please <laughs> but krishna told me, if you cannot practice regulations of bhakti yoga then just try to work for me because by working for me you will come to the perfect stage okay this is the third level of devotion okay so krishna is telling here clearly do this you become a prop, top top mode devotee he is not telling first he said use mind and intelligence second he he said if you cannot use mind and intelligence follow the regulative principles third he said if you cannot you if you cannot follow the regulative principles and follow the bhakti yoga principles then work for me working for me means maybe some service temple construction is going on we will go and assist there we will take care of 
material inward material outward okay uh, taking care of organizing the things there or maybe a collection of donations for you know krishna's temple construction or maybe any kind of devotional service that we are doing is also a devotional service okay so for anybody to organize in some program we need funds if you can be part of collecting funds also is a devotional service but that is a third class devotion that's what krishna is that is not the topmost devotion you should come to a stage of serving krishna directly with your material senses for that this is a stage another stage so krishna is telling if you can't do that at least do this okay if you can't do this also there are ways the next way is if however you are unable to work in the consciousness of me then try to act giving up all the results of your work and try to be self situated okay so at least krishna is telling give up the results don't work for you if you can't work for me but at least don't work for you that's what krishna is telling if if you are working for ourselves we will never be spiritually elevated you have to work for society at least right if you can if you can work for krishna it is a top boss if you cannot work for krishna at least work for society this is where you have to understand we were thinking till now that manav seva madav seva okay social service is a god, serving god no krishna is not telling that krishna is telling he is giving a fourth place he is not a top most level of devotion it is fourth level but you do this he is not denying to do this he is telling you to do this so that you can gradually progress to become a top most devotee okay if you say that i will end here i will start here i will end here then that is not what krishna wants krishna wants to do the uh, manav seva do the social service so that you will develop a uh, renunciation you will develop giving up results giving up results means you you give for others i work for you i work for somebody else if that attitude is developed in us then tomorrow we might work for krishna right so we have to develop that attitude but working for krishna is the topmost dharma but if you cannot work for krishna that's why krishna says in 18th chapter give up all dharmas and work for me that is the topmost dharma krishna says sarva dharman parityajha mam ekam sharam so give up all dharmas and surrender to me that is the topmost religion he says okay so but we are not convinced with that that's why krishna is giving us many paths so if you can work for krishna if you can work for so- so- society maybe you will develop the renunciation and tomorrow you may work for krishna then the next level of devotion if so it's not end so <laughs> tips if if you cannot take to this practice then engage yourself in the cultivation of knowledge okay better than the knowledge however is meditation and better than the meditation is renunciation of the fruits of action for by such renunciation one can attain the peace of mind krishna is clearly telling jnana is the last part <laughs> get knowledge go and read scriptures buy books read about me so if you cannot practice all these things you cannot come to center you cannot do shravanam kirtanam smaranam pada sevanam all these things if we cannot do at least develop get the knowledge the knowledge that you can get is by reading the scriptures books bhagavad gita bhagavatam you can read and get the knowledge understand about devotion understand about krishna understand about devotees if you can do that that is also a devotional service but krishna is telling that is not the best that is the okay thing but better than knowledge is a meditation if you can if you can meditate upon me that is a better thing than knowledge because if you can meditate upon krishna 
that means you are already advanced you know that the krishna is god whatever the vedas or maybe upanishads whatever the scriptures that you are reading is for us to understand who is god and what is our relationship with god if you can do that in the in your meditation if you can think about krishna in your meditation that means you are one head one step ahead of jnani okay and better than meditation what is the better than meditation renunciation of fruits of action you are meditating but you are not offering you are not offering anything to krishna then that's not enough so he is saying krishna is saying any action that you there will be some result that result offer to me. understand the levels of devotion you are understanding so if you cannot do this you get the knowledge but better than knowledge is meditation better than meditation is offering results to me okay so when you offer the results which is equal to yajna offering the result is sacrifice right sacrifice means performing yajna so performing yajna is something is prescribed any action that we do we should act like sacrifice that's what we learned in the first four chapters okay third chapter also we said shasha said so i'll i'll summarize this give up all the results is better than prescribed duties like uh, uh, and knowledge get the knowledge then knowledge be better than knowledge meditation better than meditation uh, so meditation when you do the meditation what will happen is parmatma realization we get we, we the, the yogis who are meditating will meditate upon parmatma parmatma feature of god then bhagavan realization will come later so there are three three levels of realizing god one is impersonal brahman realization then second is parmatma realization third is bhagavan realization bhagavan realization is personal form realization okay then who is dear to me krishna is telling krishna is telling who is dear to how many of you want to become close to krishna dear to krishna so we need to understand who is dear to me he by whom no one is put into the difficulty under who is not disturbed by anyone who is equipoised in the happiness and distress fear anxiety is very dear to me okay in any situation we should be able to perform this kind of devotional service smaranam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam vandanam dhasyam atmanivedam these types of devotional service we should be able to perform in any type of situation we should not say that today is holiday for me so i will perform <laughs> so we should not say okay i have some time so i will chant unconditional uninterrupted devotional service we should do that's what krishna is telling if you see krishna i have given you one photo here pralad maharaj pralad maharaj was having all favorable situations to perform bhakti huh? no all unfavorable situations <laughs> his father is not allowing him to do perform bhakti and he was he was told to kill okay he was he was uh, uh, he was even he, he was exposed to snakes to bite okay he was uh, thrown from the hill and he was put into the water yeah, all types of difficulties are given to pralad maharaj but he did not give up on bhakti this is the type of devotion that is if you can perform this krishna is telling that he is close to me he is dear to me and i will protect them from all difficulties like how prahlad maharaj was protected can anybody do anything to prahlad maharaj out of all efforts that they have put not even a small scratch on his body huh? small scratch also he was thrown from you know so height but not even a small scratch on the body of prahlad maharaj okay who protected him why krishna is telling if you can perform an uninterrupted unmotivated devotional service i will protect you so that much we should have those who follow this imperishable path of devotional service and who completely engage themselves with faith 
making me the supreme goal or very very dear to me making me the supreme goal. krishna is telling making me the supreme goal make me the supreme goal. not the impersonal brahman this is the imperishable knowledge okay imperishable knowledge this so if we can understand this and perform our devotional service krishna is assuring that he you are the dear person to dear most person to. okay so we understood whom to worship how to worship what is the top level of worship we understood so this is the very important essence of this 12th chapter so let us see the summary in the first two verses first verse uh, answer the, the doubt that krishna arjuna expressed whether i have to worship impersonal brahman or i have to worship the personal form so for that the answer he has given worshiping impersonal brahman is a troublesome and difficult okay whereas worshiping krishna's personal form is the top most and he has given the levels of bhakti in 10.12.8 he has given fix your mind and intelligence and 10.9 he has given follow the regulative principles 10. Uh, sorry 12.10 uh, worship with the uh, work for krishna not for you and if you cannot work for krishna and uh, give up the results and work for others society and if you cannot work for society at least develop some knowledge and meditate upon krishna okay thank you very much so as we said we, if you want to really perform a devotional service in nine ways chanting is the only way okay chanting is the only way so let us all take you know uh, commitment to chant at least one round every day okay so mataji prabhu ji whoever is not chanting one day at least chant one day one, uh, chant one round in one day at least start with that okay so so next week i expect all of you uh, to say that yes i chanted every day one round at least <laughs> okay this is so let us all chant uh, five times hare krishna mahamantra and end the session hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare 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 krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare 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 krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare